With this lesson here, we're at day nine for chapter one for physics 12. We're just gonna do a little review of projectile motion from physics 11. And that's of course what happens when you throw like a baseball through the air and you watch that upside down parabola that it follows. And it's actually kind of a combination of a couple of different physics motions. One of them is an acceleration of gravity motion and the other is just constant motion sideways. Um, and so the first few examples, you're going to go, yeah, 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 total review. And then the, the, the last example here, we'll kind of spice it up as much as we can and, and make it very physics 12-y. So first of all, just the, the review of what you know from physics 11 uh, projectiles. Yeah, that's what happens when you throw things through the air. Um, what I can tell you is that it, it is really two separate stories, two separate components to the story that are linked by time. So time is the one number that's kind of constant between those two stories. And you can use one story to help you find the time and then take that to the other side of the story, which we'll do in a second. The, the path of the object without air friction would actually be a parabola. It's kind of an upside down parabola that the object will follow as it goes through the air, like a y equals x squared graph, but inverted upside down. Okay, um, I'm just going to draw a little orange ball here for a second. In fact, let me let me just put all the notes up here real quick and then we can talk about it. So this uh, this little orange ball. It's following an upside down parabola. And as it does that, there are some interesting changes that happen to the velocity along the way. So the velocity is actually that blue vector. And you can see that at the beginning, it's kind of going up and to the right. And I've then taken that, that blue vector that's here and said, okay, look, there's the velocity at that moment. And said, okay, well, how fast is it going sideways? That's the VX. And then how fast is it going up? Just like throwing a rock straight up into the air it would have some original motion upwards. Now this velocity is going to change as time goes by. Here we see that it's going at a different angle. And the reason is not because the VX is changing. That's actually nice and stable if there's no friction from the air. But the VY is getting tinier, right? So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's causing this blue velocity to get tinier and change its direction. Up at the very top, at maximum height, that's when the object is only going sideways. It no longer has a velocity upward anymore, just like throwing a rock straight up into the air. It loses that upward velocity, and it's briefly zero. It still has the exact same velocity sideways, and that means the overall vector that I have in blue is as tiny as it's ever going to be, and it points sideways. So yeah, the maximum height is going to occur when that vertical component of the velocity has gone to zero. And then if you keep waiting, you'll notice that the x velocity is still there, but now it starts to develop a downward velocity because it is accelerating in the vertical direction. So some key things, we talked about this in physics 11, the x velocity is constant. Once you know what it is at the beginning of the question, it's not gonna change, but the y velocity does change because there is some acceleration in the picture. You know what I haven't added to this picture would be like forces. So none of those arrows you see there are forces, those are all just velocities. But if you were to put in forces, what you'd have is just like an mg going down. And that mg going down is always the same. It's pointing down and it's always the same size. And that's why this thing just accelerates down at 9.8 meters per second squared the whole time. It doesn't accelerate sideways at all. Now one subtle little bit of vocab that we'll talk about. Um, when people talk about the speed of the ball, the projectile, they're talking about how big this blue vector is, right? So the velocity actually talks about how big and which way, and then the speed is just the how big part of that blue vector. And you can see that the speed goes from, you know, it's a big long vector here, so a large speed, a little smaller, smallest speed, and then we start to develop more speed again as it begins to descend. So what was our plan for doing this in physics 11? Um, well, we broke it down and we said, man, sideways, this thing is so simple. It's just got this velocity sideways that never changes. And you can just do D equals VT. But up and down, it's a good old kinematic story with some constant downward acceleration. And for that part, you have to deal with the fact that the velocities are continually changing. And so our technique for doing this back in physics 11 works so well, we're gonna do it again we use just a few equations and this nice little table. So the table, if you remember, was there to help you keep track of all the different velocities and accelerations because there's some in the x direction and some in the y. 
And most students like to put the vertical column first, though it makes no difference. And then you can write down your five kinematic variables. Good old VIFDAT, V I V F D A N T. Now, for every single baseball thrown through the air story we're ever going to do, you can start pre installing these two numbers in every single table. It's always going to vertically accelerate because of gravity at 9.8. Might as well call it down, might as well call it negative. And horizontally, it is not going to accelerate. Now, some other things that you can kind of note on every single question. Because there's no acceleration in that vertical direction, because that's zero, these two values here for velocity, VI and VF, sideways, they will never be different. So that's why I've got my little purple linking arrow there, right? So expect them to be the same. And remember I said that this story is linked by time? These two times will be identical. It's the only link between the two halves of this story, right? So if I can find the time in one column, I can slide it across like a crossword puzzle and use it to work on the other side of the story. Be very careful. The common mistake that students make if they're going to make one is to start developing some kinematics equation and then mixing and matching from either side of that orange line I've drawn in. Don't grab, you know, one number from here and another number from there when you go to do your kinematics calculations. Stay on one side. So no vectors should cross that line in your equation. Stay in the vertical column or stay in the horizontal. Typical equations we'll use. Vertically, there is acceleration happening. It's gravity. You'll probably find yourself using displacement equals VIT plus one half AT squared and the VF equals VI plus AT. And horizontally, wow, is it boring. It's constant velocity. Acceleration is zero. And so this D equals VIT plus one half AT squared, it just turns into VIT because the A is zero over here on the horizontal side. So we usually just write that as VT. Okay, let's try a couple of questions out. Okay, first question. This would have been as nice as it would have been in physics 11. Uh, I've got a really tall cliff here, 78.4 meters, and I've got this orange ball rolling off pretty fast here too at 39.2 meters per second. And we're going to pretend there's no air friction at all, and it's a nice flat launch. And we're going to try to figure out the range for the ball. So in the world of physics, kind of a little different from math, range is going to mean how far sideways, like on the artillery range, not the way mathematicians use the word range to talk about how far it goes up and down all right well i'm going to set up my table the blue numbers are pre-installed and the black numbers are going in for this question so vertically i'm going to put this zero value in because this ball is launched horizontally so if they ever say yeah it's horizontal launch then it doesn't originally have any vertical velocity so we can put the zero in this VF, I'm just saying, I don't know, and I'm trying to avoid it. It's actually talking about how fast this ball will be traveling down with its vertical velocity just as it strikes the ground. It has a number. I'm just going to try to stay away from it. The story does have this ball displacing down at 78.4 meters. So I'm going to call that negative 78.4. The negative means kind of, it's, it's important. And if you accidentally forget it, you'll get you know square roots of negative numbers. Um, that kind of tells you, hey, you missed a minus sign. Um, I'm not too sure of the time, uh, but I do know this thing is always going sideways at 39. So I can put 39.2 in for both of those. They want to know the range of the ball, so they're actually asking you to fill in this box right there. What is the horizontal displacement for the thing? And you can see that it is a crossword puzzle. If we can find the time, maybe vertically, slide it over, then we can go and finish this off horizontally. So let's do that. Let's go with the vertical equation that ignores VF, right? Just want to stay away from that VF vertically. Don't really know what it is. This goes so fast. Um, zero multiplied by time just destroys that whole term, turns it all into one big zero. Don't even have to talk about it. Two negatives go away, and I can tell you it's four seconds. It will take four seconds for that object to fall as if you just dropped it straight off the cliff. And so it's going to be four seconds even if it's going sideways really fast time of flight won't change. I take that time and slide it across and now I can go and do a nice little horizontal question. Really boring. D equals VT. It's done. Maybe clean it up and go with just two or three 
uh, significant digits. Let's put some units on the end. This thing's finished. Okay, well, that would have been as nice as it would have been in Physics 11. Let's do a couple of others that are just a little tougher and then one good one. So this one here, geez, it's the same story, right? This ball that flies for four seconds. But it's asking, when is the speed of the ball 49? And if they don't say speed up or speed sideways, they mean just in general, like diagonal. So when is the diagonal speed going to be 49? Hmm, I don't know. It'll be like in the middle of the trip probably somewhere, like right in there. And we're going to have this diagonal velocity that's going to be 49 meters per second. So I might want to take this story with this thing with its you know diagonal velocity here that's actually 49 and start breaking that up and saying, okay, well, how much is it over and how much is it down? Well, I know for sure that it's going 39.2 over because that never changes. The acceleration horizontally is zero. And so this is really just a little grade eight Pythagoras question. And we can go and do Pythagoras and say, hey, that's going to happen when that downward velocity is 29.4 meters per second. So now we can go and say, well, I got this for you now. This is going to occur here at 29.4 meters per second down. Now it's pretty easy to go and find this time, right? We can avoid the vertical displacement. Just do VF equals VI plus AT. Uh, that's going to be at, at three seconds. So remember, this question was going to crash into the ground at four seconds. Well, at three seconds, this object, if it had a speedometer on it, would say, hey, I'm going 49 meters per second. Granted, it's diagonal, but it is going 49 meters per second. Okay, next one. Subtly different, but kind of the same. Here's a tennis player. They're serving the ball. I'm going to assume from this picture that it was launched um, horizontally, just exactly sideways. And they're asking, what's the speed of the ball at that spot where I've just marked here? after it's gone 14 meters kind of sideways from the player. Maybe that's near like the top of the net as it goes over the net. I'm kind of wondering, hey, what's the speed of it as it's going diagonally by the top of the net? Well, I'm going to set up my nice little table and see what I can do to kind of get this thing going. Um, I, I know I can put the negative 9.8 and the 0 in, and I'm going to put this 0 in because I think it's launched horizontally by looking at the picture. Okay. So I'm going to start by actually putting in this information about the 28. I know that we're going sideways at 28. And this story says, can you pick up on what's going on with the ball after you've gone 14 meters sideways? Ah, so lots of horizontal information in this question. It's really rich with horizontal numbers. Maybe I can use horizontal numbers to find out when this happens. And sure enough, I can very fast. Happens in half a second. Just hit time 0.5. Okay, great. Well, you can take that time 0.5 and you can slide it across and put it back into the vertical column too. And now we can go and find out the VF for this thing vertically. But I got to tell you, that's not the final answer, right? Because that's just some diagonal question they've got. But it's a helpful thing to know that vertical VF. So I'm going after it. I'm going to stay in the vertical column. I'm not going to touch any of these horizontal numbers here for a second. Just stay here. And as I do, I find that that vertical VF is going to be down at 4.9 meters per second. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, they're asking for the speed of the ball. That ball right here is going to be going diagonally. It's going sideways at 28, because it always is. And it's dropping at 4.9. So the picture would look like that. The velocity, which is a vector, right, this vector here, has size and direction, but they're just they're just asking for size. They're like, hey, what's the speed? That's the same thing as saying find the magnitude of the velocity. So this should be done pretty quick. You know, we've got that nice little right angle triangle. We can just do a quick little application of Pythagoras here. By the time you square the legs and add them up, take a square root, it's 28.4 meters per second. You could find the angle too if you wanted, but this question just didn't want to know. Okay, final question, and it's a good one. It's got a whole bunch of parts to it. It's it's going to take us a bit of time here. Almost as much time to do this question as, the, as all the other stuff we've done today for this lesson. First of all, I'm trying to figure out what is going on. There's some sort of ledge. It's 100 meters tall, you know, 300 and some feet. 
Um, something is launched stupidly fast at 120 meters per second at a 35 degree angle. So I'm trying to think like, what is this? Maybe, maybe there's, um, there's some student who's sitting up on the, the bench up above Okanagan Lake there. And maybe they're like, yeah, hey, look, I'm about 100 meters up above the lake, right? So looking at this picture, yeah, maybe they're up on the cliff, 100 meters above the lake. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to launch something into the lake, but I want to do it faster than I can throw it. So maybe, maybe they've got like a potato gun. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to shoot potatoes out of this potato gun. But this story had it going 120 meters per second, so you need a better potato gun. Maybe, maybe it's this potato gun. That would probably shoot, what is that, a swimming pool ladder? Um, this guy's probably going to be shooting some stuff a little bit faster, but that might not get you 120 meters per second. Maybe you, maybe you need this one. Maybe you need that potato gun. I think this is actually a pumpkin launcher or something like that. Um, but whatever it is, I'm thinking it's going to go 120 meters per second. And maybe we can actually like hoist this thing up on some hydraulics and actually get it pointing up in the air. That way it'll shoot at this 35 degree angle. All right. So we have the story. Now let's have some fun. First thing, we are so good at doing these questions when we can do the table with vertical and horizontal. And this one right away says, look, diagonal. That is not healthy. So before you even get going, let's break down the original launch. Right as the potato comes out of the gun, it's going 120 on the diagonal. Well, let's break it up using cosine for X and sine for Y and find out how fast this thing is going on the launch. Right out of the potato gun, the thing's going 98 sideways. That number's not going to change. There's no acceleration sideways. Off the launch, when you're 100 meters up above the lake, it's going 68 up. That number's going to start changing pretty quick. It's going to drop and drop and drop and drop and hit zero when you're at maximum height and then go more and more and more and more negative as this potato goes down into the lake. Okay, so forget the 120. Sever your emotional attachments to that. It's not helpful. Let's go with these numbers for what's happening. First question, what's the maximum height? If you could grab a big tape measure and ask, how high will it be above the lake? Um, I want to try to figure that out. Turns out you can make one of these tables. We won't even really need the horizontal part. We're just going to work just on the vertical for a moment and see if we can follow this, uh, this potato up into the air. So I would do it something like this. I would say, okay, we've got vertical velocity being zero right up there at the top. It's no longer going up, but hasn't started to go down. It's just got that VF of zero for that spot right there for the potato. So I'm gonna go, and in this box here, I'm gonna go and put in a zero. Okay, that'll catch the moment of maximum height. And like I said, I'm not even going to worry about the horizontal column in the table. I want to know the vertical displacement. I'm looking for that vertical D. I think I can get there without even touching the time. Right? So if we can do kinematics with VF squared minus VI squared, you're welcome to use any of the kinematics equations. And so this one actually works pretty good. It says, well, it's going to displace 242 meters. Now, I think we're kind of done with this part of the example. Um, this distance is 242. That's how far it's gone up. Remember, there's already 100 here. I guess it's not quite to scale. So if people wanted to know what is it above the cliff top, you know, from here, from where you launched it, there's the launcher, uh, you'd say 242 up from there. Or if they said, well, what about like from the lake, somebody's down here in a boat. You could say, oh, well, 342 above them compared to the boat. Now, we can't really do much more with this table because it only gets you to there. So we're going to need a new table for the rest of this question. Because for the rest of this question, we're going to go for the whole flight out of the potato gun into the lake. We're not going to stop here halfway and say, oh, well, let's restart and do it all over again. Okay, we can, we've got the math skills. We can go for the entire flight. So we're going to set up our table. Got our vertical and horizontal stories. Each of them has their VIFDAT five variables. The horizontal velocity all day long is 98. On the launch, right here, this potato's going up at 68, but it's accelerating down at negative 9.8. 
Okay, by the time we're done, we're going to have all of the boxes in this table filled in. Okay, it's just going to take us a few stories to get there. You don't have to keep drawing the table over and over again now. If we can just fill that table in for the whole flight, we'll have this question done. And it'll be the same picture over and over and over. Okay, here's what I would do. Time of flight is limited by the vertical story. It runs out of room vertically. I'm going to put in negative 100 for that displacement. I know it actually goes 242 up and then 342 down. So it's actually got a vertical distance of something very large, like, I don't know, 584 meters or something. I don't care about that. The D stands for displacement. So it starts at the cliff and it ends 100 meters down. So that's where I've got that negative 100 from. I think we can find the time without even having the VF, without even worrying about how fast it goes down into the water. Sure, it's quadratic, but we spent a lot of grade 11 looking at how to do those. So the displacement's negative 100, got the acceleration in there, negative 9.8. You have to slosh everything, of course, to one side of the equation, and then we can go and solve for t using our calculator. Just feel free to throw it into the quadratic formula. You get two answers out, one of which doesn't really make a lot of sense here. It's actually talking about maybe, you know, starting with the potato way down here and getting launched up, but that's not going to happen. So we'll throw this one away and say, yep, the 15.3 is how long it's going to take to fly into the lake. And so you can fill that into the time slot in your table, right? It's going to take 15.4 seconds. All right, that table's starting to fill up. This is great. Next question. You don't have to recopy the picture. It's the same picture. It's the whole flight. Same table. Let's just keep filling. Let's look for the range. How far does it go sideways? How far does it go out into the lake before it touches? We're looking for that horizontal distance or displacement box. Okay, that's our goal. Pretty easy, actually. Horizontally, there's no acceleration, so you can just go VT. It never changes from that 98 speed, and it gets to fly for 15 seconds. So this thing goes, uh, you know, 1,500 meters, almost a mile, right? A kilometer and a half. Uh, it's going to go pretty far before it goes and crashes into the lake. And if you want to, you can go and fill that into your table. We are just about done. Let's talk about the landing, right? The velocity as it goes and crashes into the lake. We know it's going to go 98 sideways, but I'm suspecting it's going to be dropping at more than 68 because it was up at 68 way up here on the cliff. It would be down at 68 around here, and that extra little bit of downtime is going to let us actually have a bigger velocity downwards than 68. So let's go find that. Okay, Final answer of the day, let's find the velocity at impact at that 15 second mark. Okay, well, I'm going to go first and vertically find out what's going on. I'm working in the vertical column only. I'm not touching any horizontal numbers. I'm staying here. I'm going to do VF is equal to VI plus AT. And what I find is, yeah, it is dropping at more than negative 68. It's dropping at 81 meters per second. And so I can go and fill that into my table. But that doesn't really answer the question, right? This question was, yeah, but what's it just generically doing at the end? Remember, at the beginning, it was diagonally going 120. Let's give people a diagonal answer, right? Let's go a little bit better than saying, oh, well, it's dropping at 81, but going 98 sideways. Let's package those two numbers into one story. Let's do one final maneuver here and create a nice little picture. 98 sideways and 81 down. It's just some, you know, Pythagoras and, and tangent backwards, and then we can have this done. So the Pythagoras tells you that it's actually going to go 128 meters per second as it crashes into the lake. And it looks like it's got a downward angle of almost 40 degrees. Now, if you were to say, oh, the angle is 40 degrees uh, south of east, yeah, I'd actually mark that right on the test. I'd probably cry a little bit, but I would mark it right. Um, we don't really know that it's, you know, east or like, I don't know which way you're pointing this potato gun. What I do know is that compared to looking straight out, compared to looking level, it's actually dropped by 40 degrees. 
So it's best if you can just say, yeah, the angle is 40 degrees down, okay, 40 degrees below the horizon. Um, try to avoid the whole south and east thing entirely, right? Be a little bit more accurate. So that was a pretty intense question. Um, has angles in it all over the place? Here's a key takeaway. The very beginning of this question started with a potato gun launching diagonally at 120. And it finishes with this potato going diagonally at 128. And nowhere in the middle of this story were we working with diagonals because we're not good at it. I'm just going to be honest with you. It works better for us to work with X's and Y's. So the very first thing we did was take that diagonal and tear it up into like a, whatever it was, a 68 and a 98 or something like that. And then in the end, here we are putting those two diagonals back together to say, oh, here's the, or those two X and Y's back together to get the diagonal. So if they give you a diagonal, get away from that right away, like we did at the beginning of the question. Okay, so that was way back here. And we said, oh, let's get away from this 120. Let's get our 68 and our 98. And then at the end, the very last thing you can do is find a diagonal. Okay, but most of our work is going to be with the X's and the Y's. And the only link between the X's and the Y's would be time. And that wraps up this lesson.